Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This week we're gonna work on a bubble dress which has a really really cool kind of twist to it. I've never done anything like a bubble dress or a skirt or anything like that before. I kind of know how to make them but I've never actually made one. So this is gonna be a challenge for me too and I'm super excited to take you along with me. So the first thing that I have to do for every project is actually put my thoughts and my designs that I have in my head onto paper and I like to do that actually on my iPad because it's super easy to just you know erase and draw and stuff like that so let's do that. Once the design was final, this is actually what it looks like. I'm super, super happy with it. I think it looks really, really cute. This is gonna be a knit dress, so it's gonna be stretchy, obviously. And the bubble kind of pieces on the hem are sort of on the same level. So I wanna have them in my sleeves and then also on the hem. And they are supposed to be like at the same level once you wear it. So that is the idea. And for the bodice of the dress, I want to do some sort of structure, like not really structure because it's still going to be elastic, but I want to do some sort of fake boning channels, kind of. So I want to have either something sewn on or as I drew in my sketch, I want to have some stitches along the you know, areas where usually you would put boning in the back and the front so that it's gonna have this sort of boned look. I'm not sure how to do that yet, but I'm gonna do some tryouts obviously and then I'm gonna find out what technique I'm gonna use for my final piece. And actually the fabric that I'm gonna use for my bubble skirt is a very, very special fabric, which is actually this huge, colorful, painted lenten veil and it's really big because this is actually a collaboration that Tanya from Tana Kreativ started. And I'm gonna talk more about that specific collaboration in the main video, but basically just a small, you know, explanation what this actually is. And I'm gonna read this because I'm not religious, so I don't really know what this is. The Lenten veil, known as Fastentuch in German, is a depiction of the Passion of Christ on a large veil, which covers up the chancel of the church during Lent. So this is a Christian tradition, but it is also observed by Catholics and Lutherans. So that is really, really interesting. And this is what it looks like. And it is printed on a canvas, a rather thick canvas, but it's not like super sturdy. So this is not a super tightly woven material, which is great because it's therefore gonna wrinkle up really nicely for my bubble skirt and it's still gonna not be too stiff. This is so big actually I can't really show you the whole thing in total <laughs> here on camera but I'm gonna insert a picture that I took of this fabric. Really really nice so thank you so much to Tanya. I'm gonna put her link and her everything down below if you're interested. So that is the whole story behind this week's project or next week's project which I'm really excited about and I actually went ahead and made a pattern that you can see right here and it's just a simple knit dress so I basically just chopped off the skirt of my knit dress Clara and also adjusted the neckline obviously right here and took the hip a teeny tiny bit in because I need this to sit like very snug. And then I just added the channels right here, the stitching lines right here. And this is what I'm gonna try out and see how it goes. And then we're gonna do all of our alterations based on this pattern.
Okay, and just like that, the pattern pieces are cut out and yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it from some knit fabric. Okay, that is what it looks like now. As you can see, I kind of have to cut this off right here because it is really, really short because I'm planning on adding the bubble skirt right here. So you kind of have to <laughs> be okay with this framing right here. But that is what it looks like. I'm actually really happy. There is one thing I would usually probably change which is the neckline like I would like to have it a little bit lower but I'm figuring since the hem is gonna be kind of heavy or heavier it's just gonna pull it down anyways and then you don't want to have like too much of a low cut right here but other than that I think it's really really nice I have to shorten the sleeves because there will be some bubble hem as well but I think I'll just leave it as is for now. And then once I actually have the bubbles, I'm gonna attach them and use this piece right here as the lining kind of. That is the plan. I really, really like the cut right here at the shoulder area. I think the heart neckline maybe could be a bit more pronounced. So maybe I'm gonna go a teeny tiny bit more V down here because I feel like it kind of loses its shape. I think I'm fine with everything that I can fit as of right now, obviously with the bubble pieces, the lengths might change or will change. So that's another step. But other than that, I am really, really happy. Okay, so it's the next day and I think I have to kind of switch around my project idea. It has a little bit of a backstory. So as I said before, this dress and you know the lantern veil and everything like that is part of a big collaboration with a lot of German YouTubers and the person Tanya who initialized this whole thing actually came out with her video yesterday and I watched it it was really nice so go watch that video if you haven't already it's in German just so that you know so if you don't understand it still watch it to give her the view <laughs> anyways she kind of introduced me and my project to be like this big voluminous crazy design which to her credit i showed her my inspo pics and it was selkie dresses because i thought it would be really nice to do a puffy big dress with the fabric but at that time i didn't have the fabric in my hands yet so i didn't know what it felt like how heavy it was what the weft was and so on and so forth and then i got it a couple of weeks later and you know, it just was not the fabric for these kind of dresses because it is a very heavy, thicker woven material. It's a canvas and therefore light, airy, silky dress is obviously not doable with that kind of fabric. So I switched my design around to something that was suitable for the fabric that I can use. And I came up with the bubble dress that I showed you in the very beginning. And now I'm in kind of this dilemma because I feel like the bubble dress design is not really this, you know, cool, crazy thing that everybody is now expecting of me. So <laughs> I switched my design around and came up with this idea right here, which is obviously a bit of a crazier design, but it's still doable with the fabric that I'm using. And it's still using the top of the knit dress that I have already prepared. So I can use parts of my work that I have been doing the couple of last days. And now I still, I just need to figure out the, the skirt situation. I know already what kind of pattern I need to, to make. I want to do a double circle skirt to get, you know, the puffiest dress imaginable. But now it depends on how much fabric I have and I can use so let's get started so the design has the skirt line kind of down here but i think i want to do it a little bit higher so i'm just gonna kind of measure down or maybe i'm even gonna put it off of my dress form let's just see how it looks like so let's start with the skirt maybe i want to slope it down a teeny tiny bit i have like the v shape but i'm gonna do a round bottom so maybe from here and go up to here. And then down here, it's just gonna be a normal waist line as per usual, just everything needs to be round. Because if you have 
any edges you need to kind of do the same edge piece in your skirt otherwise it's going to have like a weird fold here you don't have to do that with a rounded edge or at least not a round edge that is that wide as this one. If you have smaller ones, there's the same issue, but that's just gonna make it more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm just gonna do this round thing right here. Let's go ahead and check out what I drew in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and roughly cut this off so that I can put this on fold and match everything up, center front with center front and side seam with side seam. So I can go ahead and cut this like that. And now I'm gonna use that as the piece that I will be working on. So I think lengthwise, this is somewhat of the fabric that I have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and probably do a skirt that is, let's see, I wanna have a skirt that is gonna end up being, let's say 60 centimeters or maybe 70. Let's do 70 like that. And I technically want this to go down to, is 40 enough? I think so. So if I have a 30 centimeter gap here and then do 40 centimeters here, I end up here. And then I can do a circle around here and then kind of go from 40 centimeters gradually over to 70. So I basically want to do this and obviously i'm gonna do that on the computer that's gonna be the perfect oval this is just free handed but i think it looks nice as well so i'm gonna use that this is now a full circle skirt and i think that's all i can do with the fabric that i have so maybe i'm just gonna do a full circle skirt and call it a day but basically i'm just gonna cut this out now and i'm cutting this out of this rust color jersey because that's the color that is closest to the dress i'm working on and i kind of hope <laughs> it'll work out nice and I can actually wear the dress. Maybe, maybe that's gonna work out. I need to do some horse hair in the hem so that it has a little bit of puff, but I think that'll work out. So this is gonna be a quick sew. I basically just have to hem this. I'm gonna do that by probably double folding and top stitching because this does not have to be elastic. And then up here, I am maybe gonna use a zigzag stitch and then an elastic in the center to be able to, you know, stretch this, but also singe in to put this onto my bodice because there is not too much of a difference between this and the bodice. Oh, I mean, it's probably half. The bodice is half of this, so there's still a little bit of singeing in, so let's quickly do that. Okay, that's that. First of all, cute, but this is too loose. So I just stretched and sewed this on so that I have the elasticity. I used my serger for that as well, so that this is still super elastic. The con for that is that the waist obviously is way wider than what it should be. So I'm thinking, I have my pants still underneath this, so this is why it's bulky here. But I'm thinking maybe if I put some elastic that that might resolve the problem with an elastic top stitch because now it just kind of looks like it's not fitting well, like it's wrong. I need this to be like this. But generally the skirt works out. I think I can use that. It's also really swirly. Love that. For this piece here, I didn't add the top stitches. Don't think it would be visible here and it doesn't need it because this is not heavy enough. I think the canvas will be heavy, too heavy. And I'm thinking about either doing like vertical bias binding or some strips and add boning or no boning. I don't know about that yet, but I'm gonna have to fix it somewhat so that the weight is held up and it's not just gonna, you know, tear from up here and you know the neckline's just gonna get lower 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 so that's that but I want to solve this issue right here I don't know if I made it worse or better <laughs> I think this piece I determined to only be worn with a belt because <laughs> it's just no mm -mm. I mean this way it kind of looks like Santa Claus so this could be a fun Christmas dress, I guess, but I think this will remain a tryout piece. Or maybe I'm just gonna detach the skirt 
and make the top a actual wearable top because the top is nice like it's just the skirt attachment in this specific fabric with the waist seams that are just really really ugly and i really dislike it so i'm gonna scrap that and i think i'm probably just gonna add a zipper to the back and around the waist area and not have this elastic because it doesn't need it for the canvas and it's just gonna make everything so much easier if i don't have to you know have this remain elastic and i also don't like working with elastics so meh. i'm just kind of over this piece i guess the actual real dress will look nice i still have to figure out the color combinations now i'm kind of thinking of white and then the lantern veil you'll see next week <laughs> but basically that's that's what it's gonna end up being just a nice and not scuffed like this what about shoulder pads should i add shoulder pads <laughs> no i'm not i'm actually also i'm probably gonna include that in you know the video in two weeks but i'm kind of working on a dindle so this is the bodice it has this really really nice i hope you can see the shine these are the sequins they look really, really cute. And I'm gonna finish this and you're gonna hear more about that either in this video or in the next one. So I'm really excited about that, but I think we're gonna call it a day for now. And I know exactly what I have to do for the actual pattern and the actual dress. I think that'll work out. We will forget about this piece right here and never talk about this mock-up ever again. <laughs> but that's why you do mock-ups because this mess in my actual fabric where I only have one piece and that's it would have been horrible so thank god it happened in the tryout piece and that's it for today's video I hope you enjoyed this little peek behind the scenes obviously you're going to find the actual tutorial where I actually make this dress work hopefully next week and if it's already up you're going to find a link in the description box down below as well as the pattern for this dress I will be doing this pattern next week with the tutorial. So if it's already online, you can check it out via the link in the description down below. If not, then it's not there. So that's also the most direct way to support me. And also, if you haven't already, go and hit subscribe and ring the bell so you'll never miss any uploads. I am uploading every Sunday. Also in between the uploads, you can check out my Instagram. Links to all of my social media are down below as well as the join button to my channel. You can become a channel member and also support me that way. So that would be most appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next week for the actual tutorial. So until then, bye guys.